Hi. It's been a long time since I made a video. Uh, I had some family people that were sick and I had to take care of them and uh, you know how that goes and I haven't made a video. I've just been kind of depressed a little bit but I'm, I'm back doing things. I've been working here. I got, uh, there's some dahlias. Right there is some Hungry Gap kale I got from Adaptive Seed. Next to it is some Scottish, old variety of Scottish kale. And uh, it's both of those are doing very well. I got a mulch with grass grass clippings. And then next to that I have some Brussels sprouts and some lettuce. You probably can't see the lettuce. I got to move it over. Uh, it's right there, a row of lettuce. And then over on this side I got some open pollinated ultra sweet corn. Uh, I'm going to try it and see how it tastes. I'd like to save my own corn seed if I could, but then the hybrids you can't, and this you can't. Uh, now over here, I have, uh, these are called seascaped ever-bearing strawberries. I'm really liking them because of the size. I don't know if you can see this right here, but uh, see how big that strawberry is? Doesn't that look nice? That's a big strawberry. And they're all big like that. Most ever bears are small. Uh, these, when I first planted them, weren't doing very good because I got them transplanted really late. But now they're coming along pretty good. I'm going to plant more of these. Now I'm going to go out to the other part of my garden. I'll show you what I got going here. I'm trying not to bounce around too much. This year I got, oh, probably. 15 gallons of marion berries off of this little group here. These marion berries are doing fantastic. Uh, they're good flavored. They're not as good as the little wild trailing, but they're a lot easier to pick and you get a lot more of them. They're easy to grow as long as your soil's good. Right in front here, I got volunteer potatoes growing. They just volunteered themselves and just started growing. They were in the compost that I spread out here. And you can see the marion berries from the other side. I've, they're almost all done now. Uh, they were loaded. And then I have a, a row of raspberries. These are fantastic raspberries. And I got a row of everbearing raspberries next to it. Um, then over here, this is some more volunteer squash and potatoes that are just going nuts. You can see the squash. I'm not sure what kind they are. I will find out someday. But they're, they're big. And that's just a volunteer that just grew without any help at all. Now this here, you're seeing here, uh, is called hardy kiwi. I would have had fruit this year on this, but we had a late frost and I didn't cover it and it just nails it hard. So if I would have put just some cloth over top, some kind of cover over top of it, I would have probably got fruit off of this. But uh, it's a real vigorous vine. There's a male one there. And there's another female here. You've got to have female and male with these. Uh, my neighbor gave me this. This is a, a lima bean, a, a, a pole lima bean that they've grown around here for quite a few years. Probably probably 30 years. It uh, hasn't been taken care of much, but boy is it growing. It's, it's a very productive plant. Uh, that's amazing. Um, now over here I got Walla Walla Sweets. They're pretty much all done and I'm just picking them now. You can kind of see what's left of them. And uh, uh, they do pretty good here. And then I, right here I got Carol Demp's dried beans. They're called gauchos. And uh, a very good bean. You can see them here. See all the beans there? Amazing. She is a real good plant breeder. You can buy her seeds online at her website, Carol Dem. You can look it up and find it. But she's got some good seeds. Um, I have some carrots over there and I have some lettuce that's going to seed over there. And I got some uh, endive on the other side that I'm growing. And then over here, I have a lot of garden. Anyway, I got four rows of potatoes growing here. And uh, they're a little bit weedy, but uh, that's the way. Uh, you don't want to disturb them too much. I just drop the, 
the weeds back into the row I got and uh, use it as mulch and it helps the soil out. Here I got Russian kale and a row of it. This is my own seed I've been saving for probably five years. Uh, the middle there must be a problem with the soil because you see it's way a lot smaller. And uh, these are parsnips that I'm growing here. Those are, I like those in the winter, they're a good calorie crop. And then I got a row of carrots. These rows are 70 foot long. There's a row of carrots. This is a row of uh, purple sprouting broccoli. It's a winter broccoli. It, it, you get it in the springtime. You don't see any sprouts yet, but uh, it's growing real well. This is a row of Irish uh, dry beans. I think it's called um, uh, Irish Crick Bean something like that. Anyway, they grew this up in Vancouver Island, so it's well adapted to our climate, and it's doing well, but not quite as good as the Demp, uh, Carol Demp's dry beans. This is two more rows of potatoes. You can see them there. And then I got a row of purple pod green beans. I got them from Ed Hume. They're a good variety. I like those. They're really vigorous in cold weather. This is a row of uh, dino kale that I uh, is saved from my own seed that I got. And I've grown it one year here. But somebody else has grown this five years in, in, in the Olympia area. So uh, Then out there I got cabbage growing, a couple of little rows. These are tomatoes. These are uh, um, canning tomatoes. They're growing. And then I got a row of rutabagas. You plant those in July. Uh, and they're just, I planted those in the end of July. They're coming up. There's another row of parsnips I planted for my own seed that I saved. That's one thing about parsnips. When you save the seed for parsnips, the, the plant can burn the heck out of your skin. You gotta be really careful with parsnips. And the, the second year, the first year you're fine, but the second year when they're going to seed, when you start cutting the stalks, you better wear gloves and, and carveralls and everything. You do not let that stuff touch your skin. Here's a row of uh, cabbage, and then I got another row of cabbage right here for the fall time. And then you can see out there, there's, I'm going to walk out there. That's one type of field corn I got, I'm growing. I have a, uh, this is a dent flint field corn. You can see how tall it is. It's just starting to tassel out. Uh, it's a later variety. And uh, it's doing all right. But it's, uh, it's probably 10, that one deal there is probably 10 foot tall. It's pretty tall. Uh, and then here I have uh, some squash. I got some winter squash, which is uh, Delica, and I got some zucchini growing here. And then over here is sweet meat squash. I got a, a row of those. They're called homestead variety. Uh, actually, this was another variety that Carol Demp developed. It's real good. And then out there, I got some cucumber seed, uh, cucumbers that I saved my own seed, and they're growing. This here is popcorn. A black Dakota, I think it's called. Popcorn. Uh, I notice it needs more heat, but it's doing all right. And I put sawdust down and mixed it up in, in the soil last year, and it really depleted the, the nitrogen out of the soil. I don't suggest you doing that. Uh, if You can mulch with it, but do not mix it in the ground until it's completely rotten or compost at first. This is cover crop. I got crimson clover and, and some more wheat is growing back up from it went to seed and it's re-sprouting itself. Now I'm going to take you over this Carol Dent uh, corn. It's called Cascade Ruby Gold. This is fantastic. Even in cold weather this stuff grows here in the western Washington. It's, it's a great variety. You can see it. It's all tasseled out and it's got ears and it's forming ears. I, I was supposed to get 1200 seed and I only got like uh, I think two packages were 150 seed 
and then I got a couple of hunter packs. So I had 500 seed, and about every seed that I planted came up, even in the cool weather. I mean, it germinates very well. I mean, it's a, a very good corn and for our area. You know, we don't have the heat like the Midwest, but uh, uh, you can grow this here. You can see the ears here. It's growing real well. It's doing fantastic. Right there, I got some elderberries. It's a black type elderberry. A couple of them, they're just going nuts. Even down in this low spot, this is pretty low and it gets frosted in the winter time sometimes. Because it's so low right in here, all the cold air drains here. But uh, I see the birds are in there, they must be eating something. But the thing's just sprouting up all over the place. It's amazing. But uh, I'm going to go out here and I'll show you my seed buckthorn. And uh, it's growing well too. The birds are eating all the seeds that are around here. Uh, I got all kinds of weeds growing, but this here is sea buckthorn. You can kind of see I got a whole hedgerow of it growing. It's finally starting to really grow. Um, there's some buckwheat around it. I just leave and I pull the weeds and I'm letting that buckwheat go to seed for the bees and stuff. It's good for the bees. Weeds don't hurt anything. They just uh, they add compost back to the ground. So, you know, sometimes you just weed what you need to keep them from not not choking out but it adds mulch back to the ground here's that cover crop back and uh, there's my dog my new dog my other dog died but this I found this dog out in, on a logging road he's a boxer he's a puppy he's a year old now he's Otis his name little Otis hey Otis get up Show him how big you are. He's a lanky one. Oh, Otis. He's cooling off. He's hot. Oh, Otis. Yeah, get over it, Otis. 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 Come on. He's quite the dog. Boxers are great dogs. Good with children and stuff. I'll make another video here. I'll show you all my fruit trees later. Signing off. Bye.